What is up, YouTube? Clan V here, and welcome to our team prep for week five against the Yuma and the Chicago Cub Chews. And as you can see, we have our usual thing there. I don't know what layout, dialogue, description. I don't know. It's like five in the morning, whatever. Leave me alone. <laughs> but we're expecting six spawns from him. Uh, Mega Aggro, Landorus, I, Florgus, Tentacruel, Hariyama, and Nido King. We have two in the red. Garchomp, Ren, Reuniclus. Now, whew, there's a lot to go into here. Yuma scares me. Not because he's good. Not because his team's good. I'm not saying either of those things are false. But. Hmm, wait, is that. I don't know. Yuma is good. And Yuma's team is scary. Don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of familiarity there. We've had a couple battles in the past. This is our second league together. Uh, we've been in two seasons of the WPF together. So he's very familiar with how I battle. And that's uncomfortable for me because I take a lot of pride in being that guy who comes up with weird sets and just nasty shit in general that no one's gonna expect because it's not good but it works because no one expects it because it's not good <laughs> but Yuma knows me pretty well we've we've prepped together we've trained together and I see him as a pretty good rival <clears throat> but his team is very much the same very scary but at the same time I'm I'm iffy on this matchup because I feel like there's not a whole lot of viable mons he has that can combat me. But at the same time, the ones he does have are scary as hell. Mega Aggron. I cannot touch it. I can't touch it. I have to luck out on the switch in. And after that, I have to just hope he doesn't have T-Wave. Because T-Wave hurts my whole team. Um, Lando Eye. There's n not a single situation ever where Lando I is bad. Well, it's just probably why most leagues have a ban. I don't think it's ban worthy, but it's definitely dangerous. Florgus, again, I can't really touch it. Mega Beedrill kills it, but Yuma's a smart guy. Yuma knows that I don't have a reason to bring Mega Beedrill. Yeah, it takes care of Florgus, Shaman, Skuntank, if he is familiar with the drill one, drill run. Reuniclus, but at the same time, Mega Beedrill cannot O kill Reuniclus if it's phys physical defense. Mega Beedrill can't touch Lando Eye. Mega Beedrill can't touch Mega Aggron. Mega Beedrill can't touch Garchomp. And Needle King with a scarf outspeeds it. Mega Beedrill can't touch Pylos Wine. He must know that I have no reason to bring it, which means he's safe bringing Florgus. <clears throat> And even predicting the Florgus, I can't afford to bring Mega Beedrill. I can't. But Mega Florgus is dangerous because I can't touch it. Tentacruel. <laughs> Again, I can't touch it. Um, I really feel like he needs a Rapid Spinner too. I know Skuntank can learn Defog, but against my team, it's just better to bring Tentacruel. There's really no reason even to have Skuntank. Against me, anyway. Uh, I feel like it would just be there for the Sucker Punch utility. And defog, and I don't think that's enough of a reason. Needle King is fucking scary as hell. <laughs> Needle King is either killing something or doing very heavy damage to my entire team. Unless I can predict him well enough to like Earth Power, I'm gonna go into Zapdos. All right, now I'm gonna expect this and go into something else. Is that? That's that's way too difficult. I don't think I can play around with him like that. But we're gonna just kinda have to hope with Needle King. Now, I usually have three in the red, only two. Again, I feel like it's limited viability here. Garchomp. I don't see a reason why he'd bring Garchomp and Landorus. Knowing that <clears throat> I, ha I just picked up Sneasel. Um, honestly. He's got a pretty big ice weakness. He does. I don't think he'd bring a lot of ice weak mons against me. I don't have a lot of ice weak mons, or uh, ice type utility, but I've brought HP ice on almost, almost every week so far, on at least one mon. And Ryunoclis. Now I'm looking at his team. Looking at his team, and I'm thinking, I can outspeed everything. This is. 
this is gonna be sweep central, and then it dawned on me. I cannot sweep everything. He has no reason to not bring Trick Room. So I don't want to count Reuniclus out. I really don't. It also hits very hard. He's got Regenerator. He's brought Regenerator every week, I think. Every week. So I'm almost positive that he's going to keep bringing Regenerator. I don't know what kind of item it'll have. I don't know what kind of item it will have. I have vague ideas. I completely skipped Hariyama. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hariyama is fat. Like, that thing is fat. It's so fat, it's got thick fat. Now, thick fat hurts my team. It does. Um, it does help to block out his ice weaknesses a lot. Especially being a fighting type, it's going to do like 25% damage. Uh, it's got giant attack as well, giant HP, and it's got access to priority. Also, guts. Hariyama is scary, man. <laughs> But I think we've got a pretty sweet team lined up for him. On point. Um, if he brings this team specifically, depending on who... Hmm, well, that doesn't make sense. We're not, not going to see his, his starter before I pick. <laughs> but um, depending on the combination of mods he brings, 90% of the time we're going to lead with Swamper. Just because we have... Max HP investment, 60 defense, and 196 in spadef with a careful nature. Now, this Swamper can eat any attack any of his mons wants to dish out, save for maybe... Mm, we're probably not living in energy ball from Reuniclus. Probably not. But at the same time, if he starts with Reuniclus, he's probably running Trick Room. Which also wouldn't make sense, because I don't think anything else on his team can learn Trick Room, so he'd be burning it out to... I'm getting way too out of myself. <laughs> but, <clears throat> the whole purpose of Swamper, I want to get those rocks up. I want to get them up. Um, we have Scald, obviously. Toxic for Florgus. I can't touch that thing. Toxic for Florgus, and I really want to bait out the Needle King or the Aggron so we can start Scalding immediately. Maybe not. If he goes with Needle King, maybe Earthquake, just because it'll do that much more damage. But past that, we have Bruce Willis, the un, the unbreakable fortress with zero EVs. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, we have zero EVs in fortress. Apparently, I don't know what happened there. I'm running a cut stop berry specifically because I really, really want that. I want that match against the Lando. I do. I want that match against Lando, and I want it to knock me down on my sturdy so I can blow up in its face and not have to worry about it. Same for Needle King. Lando or Needle King, those are the biggest threats I'm seeing on this team. We also have Gyro Ball. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the EVs I have planned. Oh my god, I cannot believe I didn't put any EVs down at all for this. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's... That's, that's so terrible. We have enough physical attack investment so that an explosion will Oko, Landorus Eye, and Nido King. And Gyro Ball is really just there in case I don't want to pop yet or we can't activate Sturdy. Plus, it does a ton of damage to that Florgus. With 108 attack investment, we can cut it down by about 60%, I think. But, past that. I feel like Rapid Spin's obvious. I feel like Spikes is obvious. Either way, I'm getting my Spikes or my Stealth Rocks out turn one. That's that's how this is gonna go. That's why Fortress and Swamper are here. Obvious core is obvious. Now I'll pass that. We have Sasuke the Sneasel, our little cleanup. 100 HP, 100. Or I'm sorry, 252 attack and 156 Jolly Speed. Sasuke is our cleanup. We're rocking inner focus just in case the he wants to get a little, uh, little cheeky with Hariyama and go for a fake out. I almost, almost brought a uh, pickpocket, but I felt like there really wasn't a reason. But we do have a choice ban. Choice ban was really the only real set to run for a cleanup uh, Sneasel. Poison Jab does about 70% to a physically defensive Florgus. Uh, choice ban. 
Max Cat, Jolly Ice Shard, Oko's Landorus. Has a chance Oko <clears throat> offensive uh, offensive guard chomp. Has a chance to kill Needle King. Ice Punch has a chance to kill physically defensive guard chomp. Absolutely Oko's Needle King. Ice Punch also deals about 50 to a defensive Florgus. And knockoffs really just there to take care of that Reuniclus. Or, I mean, since we're banded, I didn't trust running Pursuit. So I really wanted it to turn into, okay, well, he's... He must know I'm going to go for an Ice Shard, I'm going to go for a knockoff and just smack whatever comes in in the face. But, that's a little cleanup. I'm really hoping Sasuke can get there with that. I have a lot of hope in this guy. Yuma's one of the main reasons I picked it up. So hopefully it shines here. Next we're going to jump right to Orko. <laughs> Excuse me. Now you're going to notice this weird ass set. We've got Parasong, Mean Look, Protecting Destiny Bond, with 76 HP, 196 Fidef, and 236 Timid Speed. Now, <clears throat> the main reason I want my hazards up turn one is because I want to bait that Tentacruel out, I want it to rapid spin, and I want Miss Magius to catch it. I want Miss Magius to catch it, and I want to go for the mean look. One reason our spadef is so high is because I want to bait that Tentacruel out, I want it to rapid spin, and I want it to attack squeaking mean look, and set up a nice mean look. Did I? I don't know. Deja every well. Because I want to set up that mean look, and I want to set up a parasol, and I want to just watch it die. Now I say that, because I have nothing that can deal with the tentacruel. Depending on the build, I can't touch it. I can't. So, worst case scenario, Miss Meiji is going to be one for one for that tentacruel. Yeah, one for one on tentacruel. Um, I want to take it out of parasol, switch out. Best case scenario, I want to hit something else with a destiny bond so two for one I'd really like to be two for one but if I can one for one I'm still happy with it it has no damaging attacks if it comes down to a one on one and I'm left with Miss Magius I did something wrong because it shouldn't last that long it's, it's physically made to die but we have the cold berry because I'm expecting um, knockoff on Lando I I'm expecting knockoff on Tentacruel but I'm really hoping that Spadef will come in handy. Um, I know we can eat a hit from Lando I, we can eat a hit from Tentacruel, we can eat a hit from Needle King. Uh, Shadow Ball Reuniclus has a vague chance to kill with this investment. So Destiny Bond is definitely going to get used in this match. Next up we have Stormcaller. Five weeks in a row, are you kidding me? Fucking right five weeks in a row. Tell me a bad time to bring a Zapdos. Like, look at that. We've brought almost a different set every single week. And even now, we're running a very, very balanced Zapdos. 188 HP. Uh, calm Nature with 116 Spadef investment. 124 Special Attack investment. And 80 Defense just to kind of tack on a little bit. We have HP Ice for obvious reasons. Lando, Garchomp, Needle King. <laughs> We have Thunderbolt for some nice clean stab. That's going to do a good amount of damage to Florcus. Depending on the build, it could either wreck Tentacruel or just leave us being sad. But worst case scenario, that just it's just going to tell me what kind of build it is. Thunder Wave is also the only attack I have to hit Hariyama on the Zapdos. Thunderbolt does heavy damage to Reuniclus. So it's not touch Needle King, but that's what we get HP Ice for, and heavy, heavy, no. Heat Wave does 50% to Omega Aggron after the filter, and I'm 100% okay with that. <clears throat> Obviously, we also have Roost, because we're running a pseudo-defensive well, pseudo set. Last but not least, now, I looked to set up. I looked this set up and I was very excited by it. And my Jenner said, This isn't legal. And I said, But it's right here. It's on the screen. I'm looking at it. And this mod caused such a hassle with both of us. Because he couldn't gen it. 
the first time. I understandably, it's very, very difficult because I was not aware that it was an event. And I'm sitting there looking up the legitimate diagnostics on how to do it. Hot potato. Oh my god. Two mons without EVs. Oh my god, that's crazy. We have a Toy Scarf Heatran. Toy Scarf Event Heatran. So, it was forced to be with a quiet nature. Which... Okay. We had... 252 modest attack. 236 in HP. Um, sorry, in speed. And 20 in HP. We had to run a quiet nature. Originally, I had about 136 in speed. Just to really make sure I outsped everything. But with that minus 10%, we really had to kick it up a lot more, just really just to build up. And 20 extra in special attack, mainly because I really, really, really needed the eruption. I did. Eruption alone Oko's everything except for Tentacruel, Hariyama, and Garchomp. No. Not Florgus either. Even after Agron's filter, O code by eruption. Lando I, O code by eruption. Reuniclus, Needle King, both dead to eruption. Even with thick fat, Pilot Swan takes massive damage from it. Skuntang and Shaman both die. I had to have this attack, so I had to have this event. If it had to be quiet, we will put as much speed investment in it as necessary. We have Flash Cannon for the Florgus. We have HP Ice for Garchomp or Lando I if I don't, if I'm A, not at max health, or B, don't want to risk the miss on Fire Blast. And Fire Blast in case our HP drops below full. <sighs> I can't believe I forgot the EVs on it. Oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so crazy. But, <clears throat> Hot Potato is... It's our Dark Horse. Apparently, I'm, I just learned this like a week ago, a lot of people run defensive Heatran, and that does not click in my brain, because I, I, I can't I can't see that happening. I mean, I'm definitely going to toy with it now that I know it exists, but I'm, I don't ladder. I don't play OU... I've dabble in Yu Yu. I mainly touch. I'm um, yeah. I mainly play around in PU to around RU. So Yu Yu and OU are very much out of my comfort zone. Um, I I really can't imagine running a defensive Heatran. I'm definitely gonna give it a shot, eventually. But yeah, guys, that's the team. I'm really hoping we can perform well. Really, really hoping. Again, this is a scary matchup for me. Yuma is a frightening opponent. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to playing him. So until then, guys, stay tuned. That match will be up eventually. <laughs> so I will see you then. Stay frosty. What is up, YouTube? Cloud Envy here, and... <laughs> Well, I literally just finished my week five, I think, match against Zuma. I'm sorry, it's very late. Uh, for some reason, my recording stopped about halfway through the live recording, so I'm sitting there talking for like a half hour, and it's not even recording, so. But, unfortunately, this match was very late for both of us. It's about two o'clock in the morning, and our schedules just do not match up. Uh, we originally had it scheduled for Thursday. Unfortunately, he could not have his mons gen by then, and I work basically Friday through Sunday night. So luckily, he was able to be awake when I got done. So we had this little doozy of a match, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't even recall half of the plays. So when it happens, it's going to be as much as a surprise to me as it is to you. <laughs> but let's get this going. Now... He's going to start off with Thickums, the Hariyama. I'm going to go into Swamper. I didn't really see a reason to switch out here. Just wanted to get my rocks up. He got that clean knockoff, so that's going to hurt pretty badly. 
some stuff happened. I looked away for a second. I'm sorry. But we go for a skull. I figure he would probably go into Lando or Garchomp. But he gets this Focus Blast, and that's crazy because it's a showdown. Anything lower than 100 accuracy he should not hit. <laughs> but he goes into Hariyama. Who's gonna eat this eruption real hard? I expected a fake out or a bullet punch, so I, I mean it's eruption, it depends on my HP, but it's not gonna do a whole lot. So hard on the falls, he goes into this guard shop, hug me, and Bruce Willis comes in. I really wanted to test if it was scarfed. So he went into Zapdos and he continued with the earthquake. Switches right on out. Made me think he's scarfed, so that's cool. He goes into Chunky Puffs, who's gonna eat this HP ice. And Chunky Puffs just straight up evolves. Gets hit with this heat wave and goes for an earthquake. I really wasn't sure why. I guess he might have expected me to go into Heatran. But Chunky Puffs falls. And this Needle King comes out. And this thing's a pain. I really want to test it out. I, you know me, I'm always afraid of the scarf. So we switch into Nimbus Magius, who's going to eat this Ice Beam like a champion. We hit him with the mean look. So he has to stay in, hits us again. And that's when we drop the hard Destiny Bond on him. So Miss Magius falls, and luckily Needle King drops as well. That was a super specially defensive Magius, specifically for Tentacruel, which luckily he didn't bring. Now we go for the uh, Ice Shard here, expecting to be Scarf, and he played it off so well. He was Yachi Berry, Yachi Berry. I really expected Lando to be Yachi Berry, but he switches into Cletus, who's going to eat an eruption from my potato. Goes into Calrissian, and I'm pretty sure this thing's Scarf because he's brought Scarf Lando before. He goes to a sludge wave and switches into Fortress. And Hug Me comes right back out. So we're gonna pop right on this thing's face. So Garchomp falls. Lando comes back out. We go back into Hot Potato. And Lando goes to the sludge wave. I'm pretty sure he was thinking the Zapdos switch was coming. But it does let us take it out with a strong HP ice. So I hope I caught that for you. Um, I'm very sorry. Um, again, my recording cut out halfway through. And if it, if it were any other night... This battle would be much more intense, much more energetic, and a lot scarier. Again, guys, I'm sorry for the late upload. Um, Yuma, I really hope we get to battle again under better circumstances. As I, I really wish we'd have been able to... Like, I wish our schedules could match up. I, I do. I know it's difficult, you going to school during the day and me working at night. And... <clears throat> let's be honest, nobody wants to play Shoutout. <laughs> But anyway, again, Yuma, thank you for the match. It was a very good battle. I really hope I get to play you again. But guys, please stick around and uh, check Yuma's channel out. We will have the team builder coming up, if not already up. I haven't decided what order I'm going to upload these in. I figure I might as well just right up there since I'm doing it right now. But anyway, guys. Until next time, we do have another team builder for you coming in less than a week. Make sure you check that one out. But until then, I will see you next time. Stay frosty.